Hi everyone. So today we're going to be working on a watercolor marker flower abstract. It's not going to be as detailed as this one, but I wanted to show you kind of how far you can push them. I do these for doodles all the time. I have notebooks full of them where I just make random shapes and then try to take those shapes and make something out of them. And this one I thought would be perfect for flowers. So let's get started. Let me see here. So it's been kind of crazy this weekend. I've been trying to get my video done, but I have a full house of even my adult kids came home. So you might hear some craziness in the background. I hope not, but just warning. So I've already got my picture that I'm gonna do. We're gonna do a really simplified version of this, which is kind of cool. And you can make it as simple as you want. I've been starting to kind of put some of my videos together for the little and big kids because I find that the older ones just can go farther with their piece. So I'll sometimes divide them into two, but sometimes it will be the same video. It depends on what we're working on. So we're going to start off by making some cool leaves. So see the craziness of art has already started. I can hear my dog barking. <laughs> okay. So let us work on the leaves. So I just go in and do a leaf shape. And that is what a leaf shape is. It's kind of like a long football shape that might be a little bit thinner on the one end. So I want you just to go in and I don't want you to stress out about your shapes. I want you just to kind of create them. Don't overthink things, just put your leaves in and don't even overthink where you're putting them. You could even have some up here. But I'm gonna start off down here. Okay, very cool. So with some of my leaf shapes, I'm gonna create a vine right in the middle, but some of them I might not. I might just do some doodles because doodles are one of my favorite things to do. We can add doodles in with markers later, but I'll just add some different kind of random shapes. So I might add like a teardrop I might add some circles. I might add a curved rectangle and another circle. This is just showing you that it's literally doodling. So just fill it up with shapes, fill it up with heart shapes, diamond shapes, whatever you want. And we're gonna paint these shapes out, but then you can go in and color them differently with markers and add details. So I'm just gonna kinda go in and Maybe these are like plants that you would see in the rainforest or something. They're cool leaves that maybe we don't see too much here. And I'm just coming up with an example. I just have seen like lots of cool leaves there on documentaries I've watched, but I'm sure they don't look exactly the same. So with some of my flowers, I'm going to go in and do kind of like a little poppy thing. So we're going to go in just with a circle, and another circle. So that's easy. Kind of looks like an egg. Like when you crack an egg and put it on a plate or in a bowl or in a frying pan, right? So we're going to just create some poppies. So it's just doodling. So if you want to pause the video and just have fun with this, like don't overthink it. I'm going to do a vines and then I'm going to maybe create kind of like a closed lily. And I'm just kind of guessing here. It doesn't look exact. And that's the thing with doodles. They don't even have to look like anything. You could just fill up your page with doodles. And then we're going to create them into flowers. That's the cool part about art. You're kind of your own boss. I shouldn't say kind of. You are your own boss. So I'm just going to keep going in. And I'm going to keep making some lilies. And you can do a... A vine just with the with one pencil mark and then we can fill it in with markers later. I just want to show you that it's sometimes easy just to doodle and draw different shapes and then try to create something out of them. Okay so this one is just the example of the drawing because I always like to do my drawing beforehand just so I have it all ready and taped to the board and we're gonna go in and we're gonna start painting. So I am going to create, I'm going to start working on my leaves. So leaves, I, and this is just my personal preference because there's purple leaves. There's all sorts of leaves you can put in, 
but I try to stay with some green. I'm gonna even do some turquoise, even though that's probably not a color relief, but I like it. I think it's kind of cute color. And then I'm gonna add some brown. I like mixing brown to neutralize some of this green and blue. And I have already some blue right here that I'm going to use. So we're gonna go in and I'm gonna create some cool leaves. So, and you guys know sometimes I like to go in and work on dry paper or I like to make puddles and we're gonna do a mixture of both. So right now I'm just gonna dip it in water and kind of work through my paint. That's pretty bright so I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. And that's just a personal preference. You can have bright green if you want. I just always like to show you, you can change things up. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with on dry paper. So I'm not doing puddles yet. And I'm just gonna fill in my doodles. And same thing for you, and don't overthink it. What I do sometimes is when I go in with different colors, I just try to balance it through my paper. So, or my project, I should say. So I'll do a couple here, and then to balance it out, I might move in and do a couple leaves right here. And see, there's a little bit less paint and there's more water, and it shows you what it does. And if I wanted that to be darker, I could just go in and do another layer. But I just like playing with the paint. This has a little bit more water on it. But they're all, it's all the same paint color, which is kind of cool. So let's go in on this side and fill some in here. And I'm gonna leave my background white. I kind of like doing that sometimes. I find it kind of really makes the bouquet pop. But you could go in and you could do it green or you could do it blue like the sky. You could do it yellow, like yellowish kind of grass it might be growing in. So you can do whatever you want to do with the background, but I'm going to leave mine white because I just think it's, I like to show you that I did crazy, crazy amounts of work on this one. And then it can be kind of basic, more like this one. Okay, so we're going to go like this. And now, you know what, I'm going to change up that green. I'm going to add a little bit of brown. Brown really neutralizes. It might make it a little, it's going to make it muddy looking, but that's okay. I want different greens so they work with my pattern. But see that green, this is the green mixed with blue and this is the green mixed with brown. So it, like I say, it's always good to experiment with our projects and our paint because we learn these different things as we go. You know what, I'm gonna go in and I think with this one, I'm gonna not, my last couple tutorials, I've used the puddles a lot where I kind of go in and let the paint do what it wants. But I'm gonna keep more control over this one, I think. I kind of like the way it looks. That's what I did with this one. So it's more, you know, controlled kind of paint. It's not like running around all over your paper like we've done before. And I have a lot of purple still on my palette from the class I did on Flamingos, oh my gosh, I had so much fun. And I can tell you, you guys are amazing artists. I can't believe some of the stuff you guys come up with. And how I love, love, love when I show something, how you guys can change it into your own. So you can make those decisions and that is huge. That's why it's so great to be a kid because your creativity is so much different than a grown ups. And you wanna kind of hold on to that. That's what I think. Super important to hold on to that. I try. Sometimes people say I'm just like a big kid, and I probably kind of am, especially when it comes to my art. Perfect. Those adults get too serious sometimes. And I always tell my kids there's lots of time to be serious, and as a kid, you don't have to. As often, you do have to be serious sometimes. Probably gonna get a note from parents saying, what the heck did you just tell my kids? So I'm gonna add some yellow to my paint to make it more of like a lime green this time. And I'm just gonna keep going in. Ooh, see what happens? It kind of hits hit a puddle, like we know it does because my paint was still wet, but that's okay. I'm gonna go in and just with some paper towel lift that right off. Okay, just be careful with how close I get to that edge. Make sure I make it perfect. 
so it touches, but it doesn't start bleeding into the other side. There we go. But that's the cool thing too. Remember I tell you sometimes things happen in our paintings that we least expect and it's kind of sometimes a neat, interesting story in there. Sometimes we only know it and it's crazy because I have lots of stories about my paintings and they're on lots of people's walls and I could literally see it and I know all the stories and I kind of like that. Perfect. Oh, I love that green. But we're going to balance it out and we're going to take it through here. Perfect. So just keep working away on your leaves. one more with the yellow and then I might start going in with some of my turquoise that I kind of put on my palette and mix that with some blue and mix that with some yellow and some brown and see what happens to it it's right here actually it's funny because the turquoise kind of ran into my other color that's the bad thing I guess I kind of do with my paint is I'm not as organized as probably a lot of people are with their palettes but Sometimes I just like to have fun. Ooh, look at that, it's so nice and deep, that green. It's actually pretty close to the other one. So you might not have a lot of difference, but don't worry. If you get a couple colors that you can't really see too much, we can go in and we're gonna create that line work we already have with our pencil with markers after. Or, or you can use paint too. Remember I said you can always use different things. Okay, let's keep working here. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna finish my leaves and my vines. And then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna start working on the flowers. Hi everyone. So I finished up my leaves and I'm gonna start working on the flowers now. So, oh, and you know what I realized? Which is crazy, I thought I was done all the leaves, but I see one part that I didn't do. That's so me, isn't it? Thought it was all done. Okay, we're just gonna finish this one little one. I guess when I put that pencil mark down, it was a little lighter than the others, so it just didn't. There. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm done the leaves. Like I said, you can just keep going. If you want to fill the whole bottom with leaves, you can, like this one. But this one, I'm going to leave some gaps in it so you guys kind of see how that works. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to get like the purpley pink color that I love that we used in the flamingo class that I still have on my palette. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to start painting my flowers. So, and like I said, I like using some of the same colors. So I'm going to move my way around and I'm going to try to balance things out. Okay, try this one. And balancing is kind of nice. When I balance something like a color, I usually will try to do it in threes. Not always. You will say, no, Erin, you didn't do this here. But Sometimes I try going in threes because what it does is we're looking and it takes the viewer's eye, even though it's confused over a whole place, a whole piece, it takes the viewer's eye, bounce, bounce, bounce. So side, side, up. So I really like working in threes. I find if you're trying to do something that's not like realistic, it's more decorative or pleasing to the eye. I really try to work in threes. It's like if you put three, like your mom, if she puts three vases down, it looks balanced. And as soon as you add the fourth, it starts to look a little, you don't know, your eye doesn't go one, two, three, one, two, three. It's like things seem very blocky. And I know that seems very weird, but if you, just keep your eye on that. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna use really light pink. And when you use white, cause I mix the pink with white, you're going to find things are quite opaque looking, which can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. So opaque means um, that it's not as translucent. So what happens is when you put it over, if you put a regular watercolor 
over um, over another watercolor, you're gonna get a really good glimpse of what's underneath. But the more opaque it is, the less it's gonna come through. It's not that you're not gonna see it at all because it is watercolor, but you're going to see it less. So that's the one thing you're gonna wanna kinda just keep an eye on and remember it's all about experimenting. So sometimes we're gonna do it and go, oh, I shouldn't have done it, but that's okay. That you just learned a super important lesson. So I'm gonna work in threes again. So one, two, three. So I'm playing kind of a mad, an art magic trick on the viewer. I'm making it very pleasing to their eye that we can do threes. Okay. Now I'm gonna go in and what color? I'm gonna take, and I've got muddy color here, so I might have to add some. Oh, here's a really nice dark. I'm gonna create a dark purple because I've made kind of a big mess, which Sometimes doesn't surprise me because that's just how I roll. So I'm gonna take some red on my palette and I'm gonna mix the red with blue. And here's some more red. It is a little murky because there was some green in there and red and green are complementary. So they kind of cancel each other out. So I just added a little bit more of everything but I kind of really like how that worked out. It's really nice, kind of like a burgundy. I'm gonna actually bring my, see, this is the part of doodling. I didn't kind of have that piece all figured out, but now I do. So I'm gonna go in with my burgundy and I'm gonna paint this flower here. And if you notice, some of them are really dark because there's no more paint on my brush and some of them are way lighter. So I can always go in and layer another paint uh, layer another bit on top, but I like it when it's not all like the exact same consistency. So one, two, three. And I put them closer together because it's pleasing to my eye, I guess. It doesn't make total sense, but that's why well, you're the artist that you get to decide these things. And of course my burgundy kind of ran into another color because I was not being careful which I guess I'm doodling, so I'm not gonna put pressure on myself. And the one thing I have noticed is I have one more spot I need to add green that I didn't realize, and it was the stem. Everything in a doodle sometimes can kind of like start working together and you don't see everything. Yeah, I'll just pull that through. And we're gonna go in with markers after, and that is so fun you can create drawings on top of your paint, which is really cool. So I'm gonna go in, here's some more blue. Here's some of the burgundy. So I'm gonna make more of a deep royal kind of purple than the burgundy was, and we're gonna go over here. Okay. You guys can probably hear the birds outside. It's starting to get nice. We're supposed to have like a beautiful day at the end of the week and I'm so happy. I've had enough of snow and ice and cold and jackets and ski pants for kids is no fun. You kids don't think it's fun, but you feel bad for your parents because it's no fun for us too because we're forcing you guys to wear them. Okay, two, where's another royal purple? make a little bit more okay I'm gonna put that one right up here so one two three again and it might not be that way for my leaves it might not be that way all the time I just kind of want to talk to you guys though about balance and show you just kind of how it works okay and I kind of just did something I didn't expect to do and I took that flower kind of all the way down like that so we're gonna try more blue now Let's go in and see what we can do. Let's do some of these. And yes, I know these probably aren't real colors that you find on the same flower. And I sometimes like playing, when I play with doodles, it's my time to see what colors look like together and side by side. So it's my time to experiment and not get too concerned. And then I'll see, would that be something I do again? Did those colors look good together? There we go. 
then let's do one right there. One, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna take another blue, kind of a brighter blue, because we're just gonna have fun. Like I said, these necessarily don't go with each other in nature, but they're kind of fun right now. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of red and I'm gonna add it to this bright blue and it makes kind of like a really cool, kind of, uh, it's not turquoise, it's kind of, it's kind of different. It's between purple and blue. We'll go with that. There's probably a real name for it, but I don't know what it is. Oh, isn't that pretty? The one thing I notice about this color, which we're going to start talking about, like I was saying, is a bit more opaque, even though I didn't add white. So I think there was probably some white in the blue tube. And that's how they got that color the way they did. Okay, let's do down here. Two. Not just balancing your eye as a color. Sometimes it's like the type of color on a watercolor. So you might do different colors, but you might have some of them very translucent and use three of those. Just very pleasing to an eye when, you, when it comes to stuff like this. Kind of ties things together. It looks like it belongs together and we don't always know why. One, two, three, okay. Now I'm going to try, let's do orange. This is kind of a bright orange, so I'm going to add some yellow to it. But like I said, it's all about experimenting. There we go. Like I said, there's always noises in my house right now because everyone's home and my husband's coming to the back, so it means he's done with kids. <laughs> here we go our house is so busy this weekend it's crazy usually we're not used to it anymore there okay one more and then I'm going to keep going with my colors and then I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to come back and we're going to try some markers so, oh, I'll show you one more. Remember, go in threes before I shut the camera off. Okay, I will be back in just a moment. Hi everyone, I'm back. So now what I'm gonna do with this watercolor piece is I'm gonna add some doodling with markers and pens. So I've got my markers and my pens here and we're gonna start working our way through. So I love doodling. I think sometimes it's really nice to have projects you can just draw on and not think about. Not get worried if something gets wrecked. And that's what I do a lot of this abstract kind of work because it doesn't have to look perfect. So I'm just gonna go through, and you can go in and you can do different kinds of designs too and I'll show you what and now you can even use different colors on your piece but I usually try with mine this is my own personal preference is I like to go in and do the doodles kind of with a color that's similar it might not be perfect but similar oh and I kind of messed up there so I'm gonna just go in and do another bit here because those lines just didn't have a place to kind of stop there, so just like that. And I'm just gonna go in and do random bits. So I like doing, I usually do lines, things like that. But you can go in and make different shapes. You could do circles or hearts or squares, just like when we were drawing our piece out. So I'm gonna kind of stick with that and I'm just gonna keep working my way through. And then we're gonna have fun with some doodles too, but I really like to kind of just stick with outlining. And I outline in different colors, but I kind of like, I'll use my purple to outline like my pinks and my reds and my other purples and the blues I might do blue, but it's all up to you. And like I said, Doodles are the way to figure out what works and what doesn't. 
So it's just giving you experience with your colors together. So no overthinking or getting worried that something doesn't look right because that is okay. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just outline some of these orange pieces. Kind of like that. You can't do anything wrong. This is your project. So feel free, you could even draw some bugs, like some ladybugs, or you could draw, what else could you draw? Some grasshoppers or some butterflies. Anything that kind of yells spring today, I think. I'm gonna go through now with some pink. And see how it changes it up? I'll use pink on orange, which is really kind of a cool combination. I like that. Where are we here? Then I can go in, I can create some of the lines I like to work with. And maybe you just put a bunch of circles or a bunch of squares, or you just color in different shapes that you draw. You know what, I'm gonna put some of this pink in with that. Then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do some shapes. So let's do some circles. See how you can just change stuff up and see what works and what doesn't work? Perfect. What could we do here that's a bit different? Let's do triangles all the way around. And it's just something different, right? You could even fill them in if you want, but I kind of like them like that. I kind of like the triangle thing today, so I'm going to do some more of it. And the flower petals, just like that. I'm going in. Outline some more of this and some of them that I outline I might outline again in a different color It's kind of fun. There we go What can we do here let's do curved lines in here You guys want to look up some cool shapes look up um, doodles on like a Pinterest kind of thing. And that's how I get a lot of the ideas of like trying different things. Like what different shapes do people do in some doodles? Like what can you do? Just like that. I'm gonna do a couple more pink outlines and then we're gonna go on to the leaves. Really like that. Hmm. I find these orange petals a little bit, I don't know. I think I'm gonna try those triangles. They just look very empty. You can even go in and make some lines in those. I'm just doing random shapes, random lines. And then I'm gonna grab my dark green because I'm gonna use my light green and my dark green. I'm gonna go through the leaves and the vines. It just gives it kind of a harder edge, which is kind of fun. I use a lot of markers and a lot of ink when I use watercolor. A lot of people like the softness of a watercolor, but I really like clear definition and clear lines. And that's not because it's right, it's because that's just my personal preference. I don't, sometimes when things look really soft, I don't like them as much as when I have hard lines in them. We're all different that way. There's gonna be some people that love watercolor, like watercolor flowers, and they like that softness. And who knows, maybe one day I will like that. It's just not right now. So I'm gonna go in and just keep working my way through. And you can also go in with your watercolor and do some doodles with a really sharp, pointed brush, you could just go in with paint too. Okay, let's go around these. And you know what, I'm gonna make some lines in that to make it interesting. These are the type of doodles I would fill my notebooks up when I was in school. I think I used to drive my teachers nuts doing that, so I wouldn't suggest it. But my, the front of my notebooks would be covered in these drawings. It was mostly my doodles. 
because I kind of, I draw when I'm listening. That's what I've always, I'm actually a better listener when I'm doing something where I find I don't listen as well. Kind of my version, I guess, of one of those like fidget spinners or those poppet things you can get that my kids have now. But there wasn't that stuff when I was in school, so just draw. Which I draw too much. I probably should not draw as much as I did in school. Just art class. We'll just go with the fact I needed a fidget spinner and there was none. There's a good reason. There we go. So I'm gonna go in with another dark green, but I wanna change it up a bit. So, you know what, I'm gonna put some lines there just because I want to. I love these, they're so fun. I'm gonna go in with a lighter green now. Kind of a more lime green with some of my leaves. And then I might even go in and create some more. Like, what do you call them? I'm having a mind issue right now. <laughs> like a stem, that's what I was going for. I'm making stems out of my markers for some of the flowers that I think need them. There, just like that. Doesn't say they all need to. Sometimes you can just have leaves around them or sometimes people can be like, wow, that's magic because I don't know how that flower is there. But let's do that. Okay, and please send in the pictures. There's some people that email me some people that put it on their parents' Facebook now and just tag me, but I'd love to see what you guys have done with these classes because I definitely, it might not seem like it because you just see the little bit of it, but I'll spend all week coming up with what we're going to work on and what we're going to do and the colors I'm going to use because I definitely love to teach. It's probably my favorite thing. I even like teaching, I think, a little bit more than just painting on my own all the time. And it pushes me out of my comfort zones and lets me try fun, creative things. So I definitely noticed that here. Just that one kind of didn't work out as well, that line. I'm going to go in and let's just create a shape. See, you can always make things work. Perfect. I think it looks amazing. I'm in love with it. I love all the bright colors. I think actually I might throw this one in a frame for my daughter's room. She's 18 and she loves to kind of collect some of my art. I'll put it up there if I don't want it. She loves to decorate. Okay, so there we go. Send me in your pictures and I'm super excited to see them. Bye for now.